Hello, this is Michael Hexter. Welcome to my Politics 2100 video cast here on YouTube. So this episode I'm calling Tax the Rich, Yes, comma, But, dot, 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 an MMT perspective. So Yes, But is my answer to the call to tax the rich. So. Um, we have in contemporary politics today, because of the $3.5 billion, I mean, trillion dollar, I'm sorry, um, uh, reconciliation package that is being hammered out in Congress, and they're looking for pay-fors or um, ta a tax pa package that, um, or revenue package uh, that, um, covers the cost of this $3.5 trillion expenditure. Um, and there's controversy about which taxes and how much to tax whom. And uh, there's a lot of um, po you know, politicking around it. And also, uh, this is quite a popular issue. I'm, I'm, in other words, there, there is a general uh, at least the taxing the rich part is a, uh, or in cor taxing corporations, is a very popular issue with like a 70, 80 percent uh, uh, popularity on a regular basis with the American people. Um, but uh, so, but that's not the only form of revenue that's being discussed. Uh, there are also um, uh, negotiation of drug prices for Medicare. Uh, there's a whole host of uh, different ways that Congress is uh, roping together um, these ta this tax package and, and in combination with its spending package. So now modern money theory, uh, which is uh, a school of economics that I have written in and I think is a crucially important um, contribution to our understanding of the economy, the macroeconomy also, a fiat currency issuing government like the U.S. federal government uh, is um, points out that this I'm calling I don't want to call it a ritual, but this practice of of uh, Congress finding taxes and linking them to a spending package is obsolete. Uh, now, um, so taxes need to be levied in order for the currency to work. So modern money theory says that you need to have a tax system and taxes drive money. So it always drive the demand for the currency. But the actual quantities of money that the government requires are not required to be taxed away from the private sector or whoever's being taxed, okay? And it's almost always the private sector uh, the households and businesses. So, um, in any case, um, the dollar for, so what MMT points out is the dollar for dollar matching of any given spending package with a tax pack package or a revenue package is, um, A, not, is not realistic really from the point of view of actually ha what happens, what actually happens with spending in the federal government because the US federal government always ends up uh, running some form of deficit uh you know in almost every year in the last you know several decades um and um and that um that running of a deficit is actually a beneficial to the economy and it's it's often unplanned okay and what mmt suggests is you should plan this you should you should project the amount of your deficit, and you should uh, design your spending and your ta and your taxation policies to independently, but to achieve important social goals and and important uh, in in the case of climate change ecological goals. Okay, um, and that then you should should um, as well as social socio ecological goals, and so. Uh, and the tax uh, portion should 
and this is something that other economic schools also agree upon, the taxation should achieve social goals like, for instance, taxing the rich. You're taxing the rich to try to make them less rich because they're too rich, okay? So that's the reason. You're not, you're not doing it to get a certain amount of money from the rich, rich people in order to spend it again because the federal government, because it issues currency, it creates currency out of thin air, it has no need to get currency from uh, rich people. So the, the phrase I'm saying, tax the rich, yes, comma, but, uh, is that I agree that rich people in our society are too rich, okay? And that we need to, and especially during the pandemic, the, we had f fabulously wealthy people becoming even more fabulously wealthy, uh, and, and social inequality has grown uh, enormously. And that this is a corrosive to our society from a whole host of perspectives, including people who have that much wealth who are essentially anything over a billionaire, anything over you know one billion dollars, let's say, have enormous power. Even a billionaire, even it maybe should be half a billion dollars. So essentially, we should have fortunes of only half a billion dollars or less. Okay, and and that um, or even less than that. I mean. It, it, you, right now, the sky's the limit, or the, the ground is the limit in terms of, not quite the ground, but the, the, the amount that you could reduce fortunes and still have a, have a, a great society and also have people who are rewarded for, let's say, if you think that, that you know, business people or you know, whatever, speculators or whomever, uh, should get rewarded for their lucky bets or their skill or whatever it is, uh, they will be handsomely rewarded at even at a half a billion dollars or less or a quarter billion dollars, whatever it is, that they can live lives of fabulous luxury um, and, and if that is what they desire, okay? And, um, but uh, at the levels of wealth that we're talking about where we have um, people approaching the quarter trillion dollars um uh uh you know in the in the in terms of the largest fortunes uh uh level of 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 wealth um that that is too wealthy okay and that that endangers democracy endangers our public uh ability to respond as a as a society together as societies there's a global problem it's not just the u.s problem but in u.s it's particularly um pronounced so one of the ways to do this is to tax wealth. So, and this is something, one of the arguments in the, um, between different groups uh, in, among people who are arguing about which kind of taxes to levy is that the wealth tax is something that has been proposed and other, some Democrats who are, are trying to tax just income, high incomes, but still incomes. And taxing incomes immediately brings you down in the socioeconomic chain in terms of like who you're actually focusing your your um, taxation upon because if you fo tax wealth you're you're targeting the, the the high especially at high net worth uh, levels only the the richest people overall but uh, income does not necessarily equal wealth and those are people who are extremely wealthy but who maybe even have negative incomes uh, through a variety of accounting tricks um, including borrowing a lot and, and um, against their fortune and, and so therefore being able to report negative income year after year. So anyway, um, it's not inherent with in, in the MMT uh, perspective. In other words, there are MMTers who are indifferent to the amount of t you tax the rich. And, and so I'm not saying that's part of an MMT perspective. But what it is an MMT perspective and what I think is being lost in the focus on the tax the rich um, uh, perspective, and unfortunately this is something that's, uh, that Bernie Sanders is prey to, that uh, the Young Turks are, and I've written about this uh, for New Economic Perspectives in the past, and I um, should probably do a video specifically about the Young Turks and their economic philosophy, that they limit the um, imagination of progressives to only what the can be taxed away from the, um, the wealthy 
at any given point. And, and, or, and they also predicate the action, the initiative you can take as a government, as a, rule, as a, as a party, in this case the Democratic Party, that can make huge advances uh, uh, you know, or could make huge advances if they were committed to using the power of the purse for the public good. And, but also taxing wisely, you know, taxing fairly and wisely, and, and so not ignoring tax policy, but decoupling spending policy from taxing tax policy, and, and decouple, not completely decoupling it, but uh, saying that they are, they are linked uh, in a way that is flexible, that is not um, uh, 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 not one-to-one -one linked, so they're rigidly linked. So you have room, as is, as is accords with reality in terms of how the government can actually and does actually spend money, especially during a crisis, especially in an emergency. So we have the COVID pandemic that is still sort of an emergency, and we still have the the after effects of that emergency, even if the emergency may have passed. And it depends on the degree to which the Delta variant um, can slow, will slow economic activity and, uh, in the next few months. But then um, you also have the, the climate crisis that, that requires, um, uh, uh, you know, enormous an enormous emergency push i have said in other videos here you know a four to six trillion dollar investment per year um, for a decade to really turn around our economy to make it to to make to to put us on the path to a to zero emissions net uh, and again that word is going to be um uh, uh thrown back at me by some people but at you know really reduce emission to, emissions from fossil fuel use to zero okay in our economy in maybe 15 years okay and um, and that um, uh, effort requires the room in other words you can't uh, uh, create cre can't uh, um, measure that according to how much you can tax away from either businesses or from uh, you know large businesses or mega corporations and the rich, but you need to design your tax policy to do certain things for you that that achieve goals, like for instance the goal that I think that the society should have of reducing fortunes to uh, eventually you know to less than one billion dollars. Okay, and. Um, and that that should be the the goal of a of a forward-looking tax policy that says we need a society where people are more equal economically, where we raise the the level of the bottom of people who are on the bottom, and we we compress the the obscene amount of economic uh, uh, power that a few people have in our society, and so and the economic power that becomes political power. Okay, which is of the critical part of that, um, or one of the critical parts of that um, uh, uh, goal. So I'm saying tax the rich, yes, but. Um, so the limitation of imagination is a critical deficit of the tax, of linking your policy program to the taxation part. Now, I have proposed, um, and I, this is maybe getting too technical, I proposed a way to account that government should be accounting according to what I'm, I've called macroeconomic accounting rather than the one-to-one, -one, like we have to tax as much as we spend in every given uh, period or every given policy, that we need to um, use a macroeconomic model, the Congress needs to use a macroeconomic model to design their policies and design their spending. So, they achieve social goals, and they and they also balance the macroeconomy, balance this, and 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 that that is a different. Um, so that needs to be instituted as a procedure in uh, the proposal of laws. So that would make the current process uh, obsolete. Okay, 
and that's something I proposed a couple times over the years. Uh, it hasn't. It probably is something that MMT economists would support. Um, I just haven't heard a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, take up of it. Uh, but I think it's a good idea, and I will continue to recommend it because it's a simple, simply, uh, you know, it follows directly from from the um, observations of modern money theory about the fiat issuing government and also the running of deficits and a bunch of different other things. So anyway, so I, 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 this is not, um, I'm trying to pull out the political aspect of this. It's not, it, it sounds technical and saying, well, you know, you can tax how much you tax and it becomes a match of numbers, but it's about not limiting your political imagination to the amount of money you can pull from by taxing uh, any group of people including from a from a, a group of users some like a consumption tax of some kind or a, a gas tax or you know which are you know we should a carbon tax I think a carbon tax is a good idea in the context of a big um, uh, Green New Deal, a very comprehensive spending program that really uh, uh, pushes and and develops the the green economy, the greenness of our economy, and and is is supercharges it in a way so that the the carbon tax itself is not so onerous because the economy is working at full capacity and people don't mind paying that tax, but the tax directs people, in other words, it directs spending and directs investment in the way that supports our social goal to reduce and eliminate our use of fossil fuels and also or just carbon emitting uh, uh, activities uh, that are, you know, uh, superfluous that we can, we can easily um, replace with, a, you know, one that doesn't emit uh, greenhouse gases. So um, um, beyond our own whatever our function, our own biological functioning, which obviously we emit, we are all emitters of greenhouse gases uh, as all animals are that. So, but anyway, um, but the, the, so I think, you know, it's great that, I mean, you know, there's been like Andrea, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is someone who I, you know, appreciate. And I think she's good, she's a good um, uh, uh, or an excellent uh, uh, politician. In general, and 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 she seems to have uh, uh, high um, principles, and and she, she she does often does the right thing. Um, she just lent her star power to this um, uh, um, issue of taxing the rich, and and and. But I just don't want that, you know, her glamour and her you know um, her uh, 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 star power to continue to narrow, and I don't know if this is her, I don't think it's her intention. I, she is aware, I think, of modern money theory and she knows something about it, but um, that, that I don't want that, uh, the tendency beyond her particular private or pu even public understanding of what economics, how the, the government spends money, um, there has been a tendency, including by Bernie Sanders and others, to uh, limit that focus to the limit the imagination, and I don't want that imagination limited whatsoever. So, in any case, um, if you found this video interesting, or in, please like it, and also uh, please comment if you have questions or um, thoughts about this presentation and. And also, if you like these videos that I'm putting out here on uh, YouTube, please uh, subscribe to my channel, Politics 2100. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See if the clicker works here.